BTEC Applied Science Unit 3 Skills Graph Plotting and Correlation Analysis. Okay, I've already talked a bit about plotting graphs. Uh, remember what makes a good graph that you plot clear points, nice clear crosses, you plot them accurately. Your scales uh, take up most of the graph paper. Uh, your axes are labelled with proper units, the graph has a title, and you've done a smooth line of best fit, not join the dots. Okay, so the last video I talked quite a bit about plotting graphs. That's a good graph. Do all your graphs on graph paper. Use a sharp pencil and a ruler. Make sure you bring them into the exam. Okay. When do you do a line graph and when do you do a bar graph, a bar chart, should be pretty obvious. And basically, if the independent variable is categoric, then you're talking a bar chart. Uh, if the independent variable is um, categoric, you do a bar chart. If we're talking continuous variables, then it's a line graph. Common sense, really. Correlation analysis. Basically, how strong is the relationship between two variables? If I say that smoking increases the chances of getting lung cancer, is there a strong relationship? Is there a weak relationship? Is it a positive correlation? In other words, the more you smoke, the bigger the chances. Is there a negative correlation? The more you smoke, the smaller the chance. So you can have a strong positive or a weak positive, there could be no correlation, uh, a weak negative or a strong negative. Okay, now the correlation coefficient is a number between minus one and one. If there's no correlation, then it's zero. Strong negative is minus one, strong positive is plus one. Now, there is a very clever mathematical formula for working it out using standard deviation and stuff. We, we don't need to know that. We just look at the graph and we estimate from looking at the graph what the correlation is. For example, look here, the, the one on the left, that's a strong negative correlation. The one on the right, uh, that is a strong positive correlation. Okay, look at these. See if you can figure out what the what is the correlation coefficient for each of these? Pause the video and have a go. I'll show you the answers in about two seconds. And there you go. Okay, so the top left one is a strong positive correlation. The one to the right of it is a strong negative. Okay, uh, the bottom right one, there is almost no correlation at all, etc. So you should be able to estimate the correlation coefficient. Uh, in a chemical reaction, now I'm going to talk about rates of reaction again. In a chemical reaction, the rate of reaction is how quickly it happens. You could measure how quickly the reactants are used up. You could measure how quickly the products are produced. So how much is produced and time. You need to know a time if you're going to work out the rate of reaction. Okay, the rate of reaction would be uh, the gradient of this graph. If you did a, a graph of the amount of gas produced against time, if it's a straight line, then the, the gradient tells you the rate of reaction. If it isn't a straight line, then the rate of reaction at any particular point in time is the gradient and you'll need to be able to work out the gradient from a graph by drawing a tangent. Here's something for you to have a go at, a bit of practice doing that. So we have a graph of volume against time. The amount of gas produced against time is measured and shown here. What would be the rate of reaction? Well, what would the rate of reaction be measured in? What is the rate of reaction at the start of the experiment uh, and at those different times? Uh, what is the rate of reaction after 60 seconds? And if you're in my class, this would be a homework for you to do. So I'm not going to tell you the answers.